When by God's fire was in my blood, I read of ancient free men of Greece and Rome who bravely stood, three hundred men and three men. And then I prayed I yet might see our brothers rent in twain. And Ireland on the problems be a nation once again. A nation once again. A nation once again. And Ireland on a problems be a nation once again. men and women spring living nations the defenders of this realm have worked well in secret and in the open they think that they have pacified Ireland they think that they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half they think that they have foreseen everything they think that they have provided against everything but the fools the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never be at peace.
Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, true us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by her gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all of the children of the nation equally, and oblivious to the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole of the people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all of our men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted, will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour of the Irish nation, must by its valour and discipline and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on by behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Podrick H. Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Connolly and Joseph Plunkett. <laughs> That moves us on now to our guest speaker. Um, he's no stranger to any of you. And one thing I can say on him, he's been a very good friend of the National Graves Association down the years. So please welcome North Belfast MLA, Jerry Kelly. Good morning, Liam. I heard you always a camaraderie hat. I said a more dose of events show how glorious living you are in last the real show. Because this fear last the real eh? The Harvard Gold Mouth Crinia Henshaw, a Kidney or the Fur of Snamra, a Huey Macker Donald Nakaska, 
August last year, Chenna, or Fugna cheer, Ni Blainus Naka, O Helm. Easter week 1916 inspired generations of Irish Republicans, but also peoples throughout the world who rose up against the tyranny of colonial rule, imperialism, and oppression. And it's a fire still burning bright in the heart of every Irish Republican today. I want to welcome you all here, especially the families of our fallen comrades who suffered so much personal loss and grief in our long struggle. I also want to pay tribute to the bravery, the leadership and the commitment of the IRA of this generation who fought in the streets of our towns and in the highways, byways and fields of our countryside. If courage was the measure of success, then Ireland would have had her freedom long ago. Volunteers in the Irish Republican Army knew that military action alone could not win freedom. They knew that our opponents and enemies had to be faced up to in every sphere of life. This was done in the civil rights movement, fighting discrimination and unemployment, in learning and fighting to protect the Irish language and our culture, in creating jobs and building communities or as a last resort, taking up arms. Armed struggle is not a philosophy or ideology in itself. It must be a decision of last resort in the absence of any other avenue to achieve justice, equality and freedom. And it has to be understood and supported by the community seeking its freedom. So what can I say, or what can be said about these volunteers who paid the supreme sacrifice? I think it's important to say they were ordinary people with families and friends, who they loved and who loved them. They could have made different choices, lived a quiet life and moved away from their community. That was not their way. Their choice was to stay and fight for those they loved and respected. And what bonded them together was a profound love of Ireland and its people. What made these ordinary men and women extraordinary was their vision of a new Ireland based on freedom and equality. They forfeited their own lives, too often young lives, and their liberty for that vision and so that others could live in freedom. They led from the front and because of this willingness to lead, we lost some of our best leaders. And there are turning points in every nation's history. And the 1916 Easter Rising had a global effect which has inspired, as Liam said earlier, freedom-loving people around the world for almost 100 years. There have been other key events in our recent history, such as the popular uprising of 1969 against the Orange State, the terrible events of Bloody Sunday 1972, and the hunger strikes of 1981. The IRA cessation of military activity in 1994, followed by the Good Friday Agreement of 98, and the IRA statement of 2005 that the war was over, were, I believe, also watersheds. All of them became milestones on the long road to achieve a united Ireland. Yet there is no miracle in a united Ireland. We have to prepare for it, and indeed, that is exactly what we have been doing. We're empowering the Assembly in the North, and we are the main opposition and only credible alternative to the present field government in the South. Partition created two Conservative states in this island. Both are the antithesis of the Republican principles of Wolf Tone and the 1916 leaders. Their vision, the Republican vision, of a genuine republic governed in the interests of all its citizens is shared by a never-growing number of people. Today, people across the island are suffering. Hundreds of thousands are struggling to make ends meet, and young people are emigrating in their droves. This is as a direct result of the unjust austerity policies of both Fianna Fáil and their successors in Fine Gael and Labour. And it is a mirror image of the British Tories. These parties are imposing eye-watering cuts to public services and working wages while safeguarding their pals, the bankers and the wealthy. James Connolly wrote that the cause of Ireland is the cause of labour and the cause of labour is the cause of Ireland and they cannot be separated. These words are as relevant today as they were then when they were spoken. It is working people who are hit hardest by job losses on a daily basis. Austerity is anti-Republican, anti-people and anti-equality. 
But we are leading the political fight back against austerity and cuts. The magnitude of those Tory cuts is putting real pressure on public services, on school budgets, on health, and on the community sector. And we entered the Stormont House, the recent Stormont House talks to protect the most vulnerable. We defended children with disabilities, adults with severe disabilities, and, long and the long-term sick. And we will continue to defend, defend the most vulnerable in our society. And we will stand fast to protect frontline services. North and South, we oppose water charges. In the South, we oppose the property tax on ordinary households. And Sinn Féin put forward alternative budgets to deliver prosper, uh, prosperity and equality and grow, on, and grow employment. And they were rejected by the other parties. It doesn't make sense to split a nation, an island nation of 6.4 million people into two separate competing economies. There is no question that as a nation we are stronger together than apart. We would be better off economically, socially and politically. More importantly, in a united Ireland we have the power to deliver hope over fear, opportunity over despair and we can carve out a new future together. And Sinn Féin is different from all our political parties and we're proud of that fact. We are a party born in struggle with our membership and elected representatives coming from the communities most under pressure from the deep economic crises north and south. And that connection with our communities is the bedrock of our politics. The mandate we are seeking in the upcoming West, Westminster election is for equality and is against austerity. We want the economic levers to create and sustain growth. The Tories and some of the local parties, however, are seeking to continue with austerity policies which will cut our public services, destroy the welfare state, and force citizens into deeper hardship. And this will be the battlefield in the time ahead. So let me spell it out clearly. Equality is a red line, is a red line issue for Sinn Féin, and we will not move back from it. We seek an inclusive United Ireland, and unionists should be assured that Republicans are totally committed to equality and opposed to all forms of discrimination. That is equality for everybody. That requires increased dialogue and engagement. It means setting aside assumptions about unionists and listening to what they have to say. It also means all of us accepting that we are part of an intercultural society and that there are many different minority voices out there that we must listen to. There is responsibility too on all of us to work towards reconciliation. And the British government needs to acknowledge its role as a protagonist in the conflict and the reality of more than a thousand deaths through collusion and British state violence when dealing with the important issue of victims. There has to be a quality of treatment for all victims and survivors, whether it is from state violence and collusion or from any other combatant force. That is the basis upon which I and other members of Sinn Féin discuss the difficult issues of our collective past. We believe, through the Stormont House Agreement, we have achieved the architecture to deal with the issues of truth and justice, with equality at its core. And we will continue to stand with the victims in their campaign for the truth from whatever, whatever section of our community they come from. A hundred years ago, at this time, the leaders of the Easter Rising were already preparing for 1916. And we are now preparing to celebrate the centenary. Some elements in the media and some of our political opponents have sought to criminalise our struggle and our party. They have always and will always fail in that quest. So on a personal note, I think I can speak for many thousands of Irish Republicans who came through the conflict when I say that we are proud of our time as volunteers in the Irish Republican Army. We are proud to have been political prisoners. And I'm equally honoured as a political activist to have been involved in peace and political negotiations and to be one of the many Sinn Féin members to be elected to represent our people. There are small groupings within the nationalist community opposed to the peace process and opposed to Sinn Féin. These groups have every right to disagree with our strategy and we have sought to engage with them on this. But they do not have a right to carry out armed actions, armed actions 
the vast majority of which are directed against unarmed civilians in the name of Irish Republicanism. These small groups are not the IRA. The Irish Republican Army fought a war against state combatant forces and fought it to a conclusion. The women and men we are remembering here today were not warmongers. They were proud Republican volunteers who took up arms against a massive military machine when there was no other option. Today, as a result of the efforts of these Republicans, there is a peaceful and democratic path to United Ireland. Now, I don't know, 99 years after the death of our 1916 martyrs, what they might have said if they had been standing here uh, talking to us. Apart, of course, from the legacy of the written word and the proclamation which was read out on the steps of the GPO and earlier here today has stood the test of time, as Liam has said, on its relevance. I can't be sure what my friends and comrades who gave their lives in the latest phase of our struggle might say either, having known many of them. But this I do know, that those who survived them took up their mantle. Our duty, our commitment to them is to do the best we can in the times that we live in now. To state the obvious, this is not 1798 or 1916 or the 1960s or 70s or 80s. We must lead, but we must lead using, using methods suitable and workable to the 21st century, to the year we're in, 2015. And that is the onerous task our fallen comrades leave us with. Irish politics is undergoing its biggest shake-up since partition, and we are at the core of that change. There is much work to do, but we are in the countdown to United Ireland. We believe that together we can make huge pro progress and truly transform society throughout Ireland. Sinn Féin now has five ministers, five MPs, four MEPs, 29 MLAs, 14 TDs, three senators and hundreds of councillors. It is the largest political party on the island of Ireland with half a million votes last year. And just think about that, because that's bigger than in 1918. Sinn Féin is the main opposition party in Leinster House and is in government in the north. We are the fastest growing movement in Ireland and the message of equality, justice and Irish unity has been heard loud and clear right across the island. We are closer to our goal of a free, independent and united Ireland than ever before. We remain guided by the noble ideals of the 1916 leaders, but we struggle in the context of 2015. We are now in a phase of nation building, what Connolly called the reconquest of Ireland by the Irish people. That requires building the political clout to bring about fundamental change. So let us send out this political message. Not only have we not gone away, but we are getting stronger by the day. I, I came away from our recent audience in Derry knowing that our future is in good hands after listening to a volume of young activists speaking with great clarity, dedication and enthusiasm. And one of our greatest strengths as a party is in our mix of generations. So allow me to finish by repeating that comment to all those standing at the final resting place of our fallen comrades and friends, whether it's in Milltown Cemetery here or wherever they may be. James Conley, speaking at Wolf Tone's graveside, said, We who hold his principles believe that any movement which would successfully grapple with the problem of national freedom must draw its inspiration not from the moulding records of the past, but from the glowing hopes of the living present, the vast possibilities of the many future. A hard job as a comradeha, we are the living present. The young Republicans standing here with us today are the many future. On the product! Hey, Ra! On the product! Scabagi! So, from all of us, it's God bless and safe home. Gornamila Mayogov.
Well, that's us sorted for this year. Thank God it was a fantastic parade, great turnout, the weather hell for us, and I hope it's a, a thing that, that it, it'll happen next year. Next year is going to be a fantastic year. Everybody, everybody, no matter where, what part of the country they're in, even our diaspora, if you can't make it to Belfast, which I would like you all to do, but if you can't, then please take part in it. Show your support for the men and women from 1916 right through that died, that gave their lives for the cause of Irish freedom. It's important, it's a massive anniversary and everybody should take part in it. It doesn't matter how much you can do, it doesn't matter how little you can do. Just be part of it and be proud of it.